Hey everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality here. Just wanted to talk about something today that I've thought about for a little bit here, and it's this whole body positivity movement and why I think it's evil. But before I get into that specific area of this video, I think it would be best to explain why uh, I'm somewhat passionate about this issue and how it affected me directly. Um, because I am one of those people that you'd probably see in the screen right here, except I'm not a woman. So, but the guy version of that at one point. So uh, I think it'd be best to explain how I got to the point where, as I mentioned in a previous video, just kind of, uh, in passing that I had gastric bypass surgery and I had it about four and a half years ago. And I think it'd be best to explain how things got to that point and then going into, why I think this movement is not going to do anybody any favor. So my background was that I was always kind of overweight uh, as a teenager uh, and then in my early 20s, stuff like that. Uh, I was never very fast. Like I played baseball. I was always, uh, you know, made fun of for being very slow. Um, and even in my 20s and 30s, my mom's Jewish mother thing, uh, would make kind of comments about like, I need to do something about my weight, which she was not wrong about. <laughs> I definitely did. Um, my problem that I had was that I just ate really bad foods. Like I, I always considered what I, uh, myself to be on what I would call the fast food diet or the pizza and burrito diet, I say in jest. Um, just ate crap, essentially. Um I was too lazy to cook stuff for myself, so I would just be like, eh, I'll go to Taco Bell or oh, I'll go to McDonald's, which are around the corner for me, and get something, and that'll be great, okay? It didn't make me feel particularly good, but I'd get it because it would be food. And that was something that I'd do, I'd say, probably on average four or five days out of the week. And in my 20s, I remember thinking to myself, especially my early 20s, like, no, nah, I'll get to exercising one of these days. And I'd have fits and starts with it. Like I'd get into it for like, you know, maybe like a month and then stop for years and then into it for a month, stop for years. And into my 30s, um, I started, I, you know, I'd stop playing baseball, of course. Um, was never good enough to uh, get very far with that, except for playing like Little League, essentially, in freshman year in high school. But I started playing softball with basically the same bunch of guys that I played baseball with, a bunch of high school friends, and uh, started feeling uh, some knee pain in my, this would have been my like mid-30s, and in probably, I want to say it was the fall of 2014, something just felt off, okay, and in the, in the fall of 2014, I'm definitely going to date myself here, I was 36 years old, uh, coming up on my 37th birthday, um, and uh, around that time, it, 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 I'd, I'd started having some, like I always had, and it turns out I have an electrical uh, issue with my heart that is not related to this, but I'd started feeling that a bit more. I started feeling palpitations, um, if you want to say that. And uh, I realized that I was going to the bathroom, like peeing a real lot, and I'm not trying to... Uh, make anybody cringe there or anything like that, but it's a necessary part of the story. And specifically about that, it was like, like I didn't work that far from my house. I was like a half an hour away. And I remember I'd go to, the, I'd go pee before I left work. And by the time I got home, it was like I had a big gulp from 7-Eleven. And that was the kind of first thing that made me go, something's a bit off here. And for uh, years at that point, I'd already had sleep apnea. I wore the whole, uh, um, CPAP machine thing. I did sleep studies, you know, so that they could determine what level my CPAP machine needed to be on. Um, and that definitely helped me sleep. So I had that going already, you know, um, and going, coming back to the, uh, you know, the peeing part that it was even so bad that like when I, before I'd go to bed, you know, I usually read. And so I'd go to the washroom before I laid down, then I'd read. And by the time I turn off my light, it was like, I gotta go to the bathroom again. And this was just, it just kept going on like this. And I kept thinking to myself, something's off here. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but we'll let my doctor tell me. So it, this kind of got to the point where it was, because it was already late in the year. And I usually go for my annual physical with my doctor uh, sometime like in early to mid-January. So set that up, did the blood test and everything, had the physical with them, told them about the stuff at the physical, what was going on. 
and they didn't have the blood test results yet. So I remember it was a few days later. It was actually on my birthday, almost to the minute of my actual birth, on my 37th birthday, the nurse called me and said, flat out, was like the first thing she said was like, you have type 2 diabetes and hypertension, and the doctor wants to come in and talk to you about it. So stop in here after work today and talk to him. So all right. So doctor tells me what to expect and what I need to do, puts me on a whole bunch of medications. I also need to do the thing that I know diabetics need to do where you uh, you have the needle that you prick your finger and you got to see what uh, you know your blood sugar level is and all that wonderful stuff. So that was fun. And it was around this time that I, w- I saw a nutritionist or a dietitian. I can't remember which one she was, uh, for the first time. And she was like, this is what you need to do. Um, and they weighed me there and that's when I came in and I'm six feet tall. I'm like right at six feet, came in at three Oh six, which isn't horrible, but it's not very good, especially for someone that's just six feet tall. I think I'm supposed to weigh like 180 pounds. So went through, uh, you know, did a few years of just trying to get stuff straight. I, I cut out alcohol from my diet. I was never a big drinker anyway, but I just said, no, that's just unnecessary calories. Uh, Soda, basically said goodbye to that as well. I should say basically, I did say goodbye to that. Um, And as for food, I still wasn't great about not eating fast food, but I kind of cut it in half. So it was like more two or three days a week, which still not great. Um, And after, I want to say it was in, uh, when I saw my doctor, yeah, it would have been 2017 for my physical. So we're going to January 2017. Uh, I had actually lost uh, only like maybe 10 pounds at that point. Uh, So I was under 300 and he kind of suggested to me, hey, uh, try gastric bypass surgery. It's something you should look into. You know, um, he's like, it could cure every single problem that you have. Um, And I'm just going to put a disclaimer here right now. I am not a doctor. I have zero medical education. So if you're overweight and you're thinking something, talk to your doctor about this before you do anything. Um, don't take my word for it, please. Um, but he suggested gastric bypass surgery, said it would cure everything that I had, the knee the knee pain that I was feeling, um, all of the other issues, the sleep apnea and everything. I was like, wow, what is this magical cure-all thing? Like, I'd heard of it, of course, um, but I was like, I don't really know the specifics. So skipping ahead, I ended up having the surgery, like I said, it was, it was actually July of 2018, and my weight, I actually got down to under 200 pounds and I hadn't been under 200 pounds since high school. So, uh, since then I've gained a little bit of the weight back, probably half of the weight, uh, back, but I still am eating much healthier. I try to avoid fast food. It doesn't really appeal to me because it does make me feel like crap, but you know what? And I wish I should say too, the gastric bypass surgery did take care of all the problems. I am not diabetic anymore. I have no more hypertension. I was taken off uh, all the medications that my doctor put me on. I mean, there's a few others, you know, since I'm going to be 45 years old in uh, six days uh, that uh, I still have to take because of, I don't want to say old age, but middle age type stuff. But nothing really that's related to um, all the stuff that happened for the uh, gastric bypass surgery. Just some things I have to take because of the stuff after that. That's just normal for that sort of thing. Um So, and I would say right now that the gastric bypass surgery was the best decision about anything I've ever made in my entire life. Um, And also, not just that, but they told me, uh, the doctors, when they did the surgery, that you need to get out and exercise. So I did. And the exercise was just walking. It was just get up off your ass and move. And I started doing that in the hospital when I was there for the uh, couple of days, because I was there for uh, in the hospital and inpatient for like 48 hours. So, uh, my mom, uh, is an avid walker and they, my parents have dogs. So we would take the dogs for a walk. Like I'd go there on the weekends and we'd walk like three or four miles. And when they're in town, uh, cause they're snow buddies. So it is January right now. So they are in good old Florida, but when they're in town here, I make a point of on the weekends, we get up and take the dogs out for a walk. And, you know, it's a good way to see my mom and dad and, and the dogs, you know, for a little bit. So been doing that, been doing some assorted other things as well. I have an exercise bike in my place. 
Uh, you know, so I use that every single day. If I'm not injured, even if I'm like dead ass tired, it's nope, got to get on the bike and I do sit-ups as well. So there's other things I can definitely do. And I'm certainly not opposed to adding additional exercises to the repertoire. Um, but that's just my whole mindset changed, uh, you know, knowing, going into the surgery because it was like, I have a second chance here. You know, I probably you know, if I stayed the way I was before, I would have cut down my life by God knows how many years. Um, and now it's like, this is my second chance. And while I'm still not in like the greatest of shape by any stretch of the imagination, um, I'm definitely much healthier than I was before. Um, so that brings me to, so again, that's my background, but that brings me to just this body positivity movement. And every time I see these folks, and it's usually women for some reason. I don't really see guys being held up to the same standard. So, you know, I apologize, ladies. That's, I'm not going to, you know, I guess this is more meant for you, but it's really kind of for everybody. But, you know, I see the, these body positivity people held up as like, no, they're fine the way they are. And it's like, no, no, they're not. They're, these are not healthy people. I mean, there was that girl that just died. She was 37, which sucks. And I always, when I see someone that's younger than me, regardless of what their background is or anything that passed away, I'm, I, it hurts. This is just like, like, why did I get, why do I get to outlive them? That's, again, whole nother subject, another thing, but it's just like, of course she was going to die young. What, like, what were you expecting? It was that girl. I don't know what she was on some reality show. She used to weigh 800 pounds. She lost like half of that, which great. That's a fantastic start, you know, but it caught up to her and she was only 37, you know, and a 37 year old shouldn't be dying of things that are related to morbid obesity. And you see even these people that are held up and put on magazine covers that are obviously not in good shape. They obviously do not exercise and people just sit there and fawn over them. And it's like, this isn't good. You're encouraging unhealthy lifestyles and people are going to die because of it. And at this point, we probably don't have any statistics around, you know, these people being told, you know, uh, Oh yeah, I, I, you know, they died young because they were listening to these body positivity people. How often does this happen? And I'm sure it's going to eventually get to the point if it's something that we can even keep a statistic about in any way, shape, or form, that it's going to be a pretty common thing that you're going to see people that are in the hospital that they have severe diabetes, they're having limbs removed because basically their appendages stop working, you know, because of diabetes, and they're going to be like yeah, I listened to all these people and it was wrong. And it's like, well, it's too late at that point. You got one life and one body. You got one chance. So don't let it go to crap. But, you know, you bring up, uh, I have a couple of articles that I link below as well that talking about like, you know, your body mass index or BMI, if you hear that. Um, and it kind of goes over the numbers for that. But, you know, you look at like, what are some of the consequences of being obese and overweight? And again, this is linked in the description below, but there could be, and this describes me right here in the article that's actually uh, from the CDC that's linked below. Uh, it says high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which are risk factors for heart disease. I had that. Type 2 diabetes, as I said, I had that. Breathing problems such as asthma and sleep apnea, I had the apnea. Joint problems such as osteoarthritis and musculoskeletal discomfort. And the knee issues that I had, the pain that I was feeling was actually degenerative arthritis. And I do not, I have not felt the pain basically since I had the surgery. Uh, I was a little bit after that, of course, because it's not like it's going to be instantaneous. And then gallstones and gallbladder disease. I did not have either one of those things, thank God. Uh, but still, it's four out of the five bullet points there that I had all of those things. So I basically hit like practically every single mark. It also says that childhood obesity is associated with psychological problems like anxiety and depression. Uh, I've never had though, or at least depression, and I've had ang I have anxiety, but it's not related to anything about my weight. Uh, low self-esteem and lower self-reported quality of life. My self-esteem is m probably not great, but it's not awful. Social problems such as bullying and stigma, and yeah, I was bullied for my weight. And obesity as adults, yeah, that was me. So I've hit a lot of that. It also says that. Adults with obesity have higher risks for stroke, many types of cancer, premature death, and mental illness such as clinical depression and anxiety. So my question then was like, well, how many years is this going to shave off your life? If you're overweight or obese, like what are we looking at here? Okay. Um, so I found another website 
and this article is linked below as well. And it says, overall obesity defined as any BMI above 30, uh, as a kilogram of whatever it is, 30, I guess, I'll just say that, um, was associated with a 4.2 year reduction in life expectancy for men and a three and a half year reduction for women. And obesity, uh, if your BMI is at least 40, was a 9.1 year reduction in life expectancy for men and 7.7 year reduction in life expectancy for women. Um, that's a lot of time. I mean, those are, I mean, yeah, sure. There's an old Dennis Leary uh, quote. I want to say it's from his no cure for cancer special from like 30 years ago where he says like, and it's, he's referring to smoking, not as, uh, uh, being obese, but he says something like, of course you don't want to live those years. Those are the worst ones. Those are the ones at the end. Uh, it's something to that effect, but getting serious. I mean, you know that the behaviors that you're engaging in that are leading to the way you look and the way you feel are going to kill you before you should be dead. Okay. If you're a woman, you're probably reasonably expected to live to be what in the United States, like 82, I think 83. And you're saying that if you're obese, if you're one of these, these uh, women, you know, you're going to live to be maybe 75. But at the same time, you go, do you see any obese old people? And the answer is no, they don't exist. I mean, I would say, do you see any obese people that are over maybe 60 or 55? And the answer to that is probably also no, you really don't see these people. They don't exist. Okay. And then, you know, and while I don't listen to her music, I've certainly seen pictures of Lizzo and, you know, she's one of the chief proponents of this body positivity movement. And it's like, I don't know how old she is. And I didn't look it up before this because I just thought about her right now, but it's like, you better enjoy her music while she's around because she's not going to make it much further. I mean, she's probably got maybe, what, another 10, 20 years before, like, she hits a point where it's like, I can't do this anymore because just these things are starting to catch up with me, you know? And it's not just her, it's all these other people. So, like, why are we engaged in behaviors that we know are destructive to us or society, like us as individuals or society? And I don't understand that. Okay, we got to stop with all these people just affirming every single behavior that we have, no matter how bad they are. Um, and I just happened to notice that it, this, the same article I just read the BMI stuff off of says actually women are expected to live 84.3 years uh, if you're a healthy weight. Okay, so I'm sorry, I was slightly off on that. And men, it's 82.2. So, But again, I don't understand why we're engaged in these behaviors that we know are going to kill us early. And there's people out there going, no, 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 you should just be okay like that. And it's like... You're going to be dead sooner than you should be. Like, don't you want to live the longest life you possibly can? Like, don't you want to take advantage of that? Because, again, you only get one chance at this. Why are you going to do something that's going to kill you before you should be gone? So that's my spiel for today. That's my rant. Just wanted to give a little background on me and why I think this movement is evil. Is because it's just, it's it's like people are telling you, again, just to engage in behaviors that are going to lead to uh, bad, uh, like severe consequences for whoever is like this and, you know, families and friends and stuff like that. And it's just not worth it. Um, so if you have the ability to, even if you don't like, even if you're overweight or obese, just get out and walk. It's all you need to do. It's literally it. It's just get out and start walking around. It's all I did. And then I still do it every single day that the weather permits as long as it's not too cold or, you know, icy out, at least, especially now or raining or something. I'm going to be out every single day walking around. Um, so that's all you need to do is just get up and move. Okay. And trust me, you will feel better. It It's inevitable. So that was it. Rant over. And I hope everybody has a good day. Please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you later.